how does somebody become a saint or how somebody canonized a saint? Well, a good way to start is to understand that nobody is born a Christian. We become a Christian. We are made a Christian by receiving the sacraments and by living a good Christian life. Now, it's important that the church recognizes people who have done this well. Notice I didn't say perfectly because nobody is perfect except God. However, as Christ teaches in the gospel, we are all called to be perfect as our heavenly father. So Christ knows that we're going to climb and there's going to be a process there. A saint began like you and me. Some began, I'm sure, better than others. Nonetheless, they themselves began. And the church is very clear. We're all called to holiness. We're all called to be saints. So why does the church single out various people? Well, it singles out various people for the same reason that you and I love good stories and especially good hero stories. We love to be inspired. It's a natural thing. We like to be lifted up. And the same is true in the spiritual life. The church gives us holy men, women, and children, and even communities of saints to inspire us for a particular reason or to imitate a particular virtue or to stand for a particular cause or ideal. For example, the martyrs, so that when, and I, I don't say if, I say when we are faced with the same temptations and challenges and problems, we can respond in the same way we can learn from those saints. So a saint is made by the grace of God. And when the church canonizes a saint, a church doesn't necessarily make the saint. God makes the saint. The church is just declaring that someone has become a saint by the grace of God. In the early church, that process was very simple. The church recognized the martyrs who had given their lives. And even now, uh, the church teaches that the martyrs have a special role in the communion of saints. Eventually, the church developed a process uh, which is now separated into four stages, where someone is declared a servant of God, a venerable, a blessed, and finally a saint. And that's just, if you will, it's an earthly distinction because a saint is a saint in heaven, no matter what their title is on earth, even if we don't know who they are. That's why we celebrate the Feast of All Saints. And the church gives these conditions of a miracle for beatification and a miracle for canonization, again, because it's a public witness of the power of the grace of God working in, in that saint. So it's simple. And so we look at the saints, whether they're only locally known, you know, the ones in the lower ranks, servants of God, venerables and blessed, or whether they make it into the universal calendar when they're declared saints for the whole church, for the observa observance of the whole church. Nonetheless, it's ultimately in praise of God. We canonize a saint because we crown the works of God himself in that person. Let's give thanks to God for giving us these gifts, our spiritual family members who are examples and witnesses to us of the great power and grace of God.